friends, Janet here again, and welcome back to my little home studio. And this video, I've decided this to do this video something a little bit different. Um, I got a message from a dear friend who's following along on these watercolor tutorials, and she had a good suggestion. She wanted to know, she's brand new at watercolor, and wanted to know if I could do a video showing all of the real basic things with watercolor. She wanted to actually see me put my brush in the water and see how much water I was picking up. Um, she wanted to see the brush mixing in the paints, and, and I totally get that. It's kind of hard for me um, as a one-woman show to be showing all of that in one screening to get it all in and me painting. So um, I totally agree with her. It is helpful to see all that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a video with the idea that those of you that are watching don't know anything about watercolor. I'm going to pretend that you were me three years ago because that's where I started. Watercolor, I started in acrylics back in the 80s, and that's really what I think I'm the best at. And then I discovered oils and fell in love with that. And then about three, maybe a little bit more than three years ago, discovered watercolor and just completely fell in love with watercolor, but didn't know anything about it. So I was pretty much just, you know, driving blind. I just went and bought an inexpensive $5 watercolor set from my local craft store. It came with a little inexpensive brush, bought a pack of watercolor paper, had my jelly jar for water, and I just started playing. Didn't know what I was doing. My results in the beginning were horrible, but I just stuck with it. I played a little every day, watched lots of videos on YouTube, and just um, got a little bit better and a little bit better, learned lots of things along the way, made tons of mistakes which hopefully in these videos I'll tell you what I did wrong so you don't have to do it. So I think her suggestion was really good. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a video that talks to you as if you know nothing about watercolor. I'm going to pretend you, I'm talking to myself three years ago, and uh, I'm going to say things that I wish someone had said to me. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to actually show you how I pick up the paint, what the difference is between the tube paints and the little cakes of paint that you get, um, the watercolor paper, cheap watercolor color paper and better watercolor paper, um, some different brushes. We'll kind of break it all down and hopefully that will help all of you. I know, you know, if I had had that, it would have helped me. So, um, so basically that's it. Now I know this is probably going to, I'll lose some followers because they're going to say, well, if she's not, you know, professional at it, why would I want to follow her? And I, and I get it. I totally get it. And that's fine. Um, but in my mind, it's like who better to learn the basics from than somebody that was just like you three years ago and didn't know anything and couldn't afford to go take professional lessons um, or pay for professional courses. So um, that's where I want to go. I'm going to pretend that you don't know anything about it and we're going to start from there. So I hope you stick with me and watch these um, videos and I hope you learn something and have a lot of fun doing it and um, go on to learn to paint beautiful florals. So let's get started. So let's start at the beginning. We're playing with watercolors, so let's start with water. You can either have jelly jars that you save. Really any kind of um, container is going to work fine. Usually have two. I have one for clear water and then I'll have a second one to wash out my brush which that water will end up getting dirty. And the reason for the two is that let's say my water has gotten dirty from cleaning out my brush and now I'm painting some beautiful pink peonies. Well when I pick up water from my pink watercolor, I'm not going to want dirty water because that's going to affect the shade of the pink. So I'm going to want clear water. So there'll be one for washing out your brush. That one will get dirty. Change it out whenever you see it getting too dirty and you think it's um, affecting the colors. And then you'll want a clear one just for using clear water and for rinsing your brush. So you can either use jelly jars, you can use coffee cups, you can use bowls, um, anything. What I have that I've had for years, and these are very inexpensive, I have, because I use it for my acrylics too, this is like a, a plastic um, bucket. It's got two sides. 
one for, so I use one for washing and then one for the clear water rinsing. And I've had that for a long time. But the jelly jars are going to work fine. So that's your water. Your brushes, you have so many choices on brushes, but I would recommend if you're a beginner just starting, this brush actually is by Artist Loft, and I'm pretty sure it came with this little $5 kit from my local craft store. I think this is an Artist Loft, maybe from Joann's. And I've had it for a while, and it's really a nice little brush. Look at the nice um, point you have on it. And that's really important. This is a nice brush, and it came free with my little $5 kit. So really the most important thing is to make sure you've got a brush that's not all fluffy and um, overused and, you know, the ends are flayed out and not nice and sleek like this because that won't serve you very well. But these are perfectly fine to start out with. Usually when you go to the craft stores or the art stores, they'll have the brushes uh, and the paints labeled as to um, levels, beginner, intermediate, professional. And, you know, unless you're independently wealthy, there's really no need to go out and spend tons of money on the very best of everything. You can work up to that later. So for now, just find a nice inexpensive brush. There's lots of them in your local craft stores uh, and online and art stores and start with that. Round brush is kind of basic. Almost everything you'll do, and when you see watercolor videos on all the artists on YouTube, they're almost always do using round brushes. There are some other specialty type brushes that work really well and you can do fun things with. I've used them in my video. I love painting flowers and leaves with a dagger brush because just the shape itself kind of takes you halfway there before you even have to really put any effort into it. You can use angle brushes for quite a few different techniques but a good round brush will serve you well. Okay, so paints. Let's talk a little bit about paints. I'm gonna to try to keep it kind of basic. Like I just said, these kits from your local craft store are fine. These are, let me get this one open. Ah, this side always sticks. Okay, so as you can see, these are dry cakes. They look kind of look like makeup. And these are fine. These will serve you well as a beginner. Uh, this is what I started with. Lots of companies make these. Um, Crayola, Artist Loft. Um, a lot of the craft stores have their own brand. You can find them online. They start at about $5 and go up from there. So this is like about a $5 kit. And lots of beautiful colors. Great way to start. It's got the top actually has little wells here for you to mix your colors. So that's great to start with. Another option, cake watercolors like these. Now this is a uh, Prima Decadent Pies. And they come in lots of different colorways. Um, and this one, it gives you a little paper palette for you to do your little color swatch there. And these are removable, so you can interchange them out. Um, it's got your little if you take this out here, you can mix your colors over here. It's great for travel because it's so small. It's got a little hook thing here for you to carry. So it's um, very handy. They're not very expensive at all. I forget what I paid for this, maybe $15 to $20. Um, but it's nice. And they have a lot of really pretty colors in their kits. And they're different sets, so that's good. And there's lots of sets like that online. I mean, literally tons of them. Now you've also got, once I got into this and realized I really loved it, my shop gals, when I owned a shop for my birthday one year, they bought me tube watercolors, a whole assortment, um, because they thought it was time that I graduated to the next level up. And I, I, my personal preference is I love the tubes. I just think the colors are just clearer and the pigments are beautiful. Um, there's so many gorgeous colors. And the nice thing about watercolor, they last so long because really you use so little um, of the color added to the water to create your flowers or whatever you're painting. It's not like acrylic paints or oil paints. These, I mean, these tubes will just last you years. I mean, literally, this size tube could last you years. 
um, but they're really nice. They're kind of creamy. You can see that nice and creamy. And when I use the tubes, because it is a tube and I don't have a palette like I have with these, I have, there's a couple options. Can you tell I like pink? These are just some of my different pinks. You can use a watercolor palette like this. These are really handy and there's like tons of these available on the internet and they're not that expensive. I open this up and I've got little wells to put all of my tube watercolors. I just squeeze them into the different well and I can mix here. I also can mix on this side and this little tray pops out. Another nice thing about watercolors, the cleanup is so quick because it's just water. Just run water over this and it just washes right off. So I can just keep cleaning that off and reusing it. Um, something else I use, let me get this out of the way, is just a sheet of glass. You can just take an old picture frame or go buy an inexpensive new picture frame. Um, take, the fr take the glass out of the frame. You can put, this one is meant for a palette, so it, it has smooth edges, so it's, I'm not going to cut myself. But if you use a glass from a frame, put some tape on the edges so you don't cut yourself. But this works really well. You just squeeze your watercolors onto your glass palette, and you can pick up the paint. You can mix it on one area. It works really, really well. And the nice thing about watercolor is that I don't have to clean this off. I put this these watercolor paints on here oh gosh last week and then all I need to do is just add water and look at that it reconstitutes and comes right back so that makes watercolors really uh, economical because there's really hardly any waste because I can bring these right back they're they're just dried out and you add water and they're good to go again so I really like using my glass palette a lot Okay, so let's see, paints, palettes, something to, now if you don't have the glass, another thing you can use, I've used just a ceramic dinner plate, um, I've used porcelain dinner plates, uh, you don't want to use anything that's papery because of course it's watercolor, so the paper is going to absorb the water and that's not good, you want something that's non-porous to use as a palette. But watercolors, they clean up so easy that you're not going to ruin, um, you know, a dinner plate if you use it for a watercolor and then just wash it off and eat dinner off of it. So don't worry about that. So those are the different options for palettes. Um, and we talked about the different options for paints and brushes. Now let's talk about loading your brush. So I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see. So you have your jar of water. Take your brush, and what you don't want to do is you want to get your brush nice and wet. You don't want to just dip in and pull out because you want those bristles to be nice and saturated. Okay, and then what you don't want to do is this. You don't want to take all that water off because now you don't have any water in there really, and it's just not, the paints are not going to flow. So usually I get my brush nice and wet, and then I'll just lightly go on the edge. And if I have big droplets on the ferrule, I don't want them dripping down in and adding water. So I might dry that off. But that's really, and I leave all that one. You can see I've got a lot of, see it on my hand? I've got a lot of water in there. And a lot of this is, it, it depends on what you're painting as to how much water you want on your brush. So uh, much of what I say when I talk about how to load the water on your brush, that's something you're going to figure out slowly on your own, depending on what you're painting and how translucent you want your color to be or how opaque. So a lot of that you'll kind of figure out on your own. But basically, you wet your bristle, just lightly tap some of the water off and get it off your ferrule, and, and that's it. Anything else past that, you'll figure out as you're painting. So I'm going to set that aside. Now... If we want to talk about um, watercolor paper, that could be a whole video in itself. So I'm going to try to keep it basic. I'm just going to tell you what I use. This is, for instance, let me show you what I've got right now. Okay, this is Arches, which is a really excellent watercolor paper. 
This is a 140 pound cold pressed. That's probably the basic watercolor paper that you'll see in all of the YouTube videos. Um, that's just pretty basic. There's lots of other, this is 100% cotton, which is really good. And the number, if I were to get a 300 pound, that just means that this paper is would be thicker. Like if I'm doing bookmarks and I want them to have some substance to them, I'll use a 300 pound watercolor paper because it's nice and stiff and I know it's gonna hold up for a bookmark. But almost everything I do, I use 140 pound cold press. It's just a good place to start and it'll serve you for pretty much anything you're painting. So that's what we're gonna do and that's what I use in all of my videos. So let's see, next, let's talk about um, maybe let's talk a little bit about the difference between these different types of watercolors. So right here, I did a little sample ahead of time, and you can see I did two circles. I put some blue in here from the tube watercolors, from the tube, like that. And I did the same here. I wet a circle and then I just dropped in a color of blue from the pat, the little pots of um, the cakes of watercolor. And they distributed pretty nice. In fact, I'll, I'll do one for you and show you, but I just wanted to show you this real quick. So then I added a darker blue. I picked up a really deep blue and I just, and this was all still wet, and I tapped it along this edge with the tube watercolor on this side and then with the cake over here and this shows you the difference between the better quality watercolors and the economical watercolors when you start getting into a lot of um, detail work oftentimes you're going to get some better results with the um, little bit more expensive watercolors you can see here how nicely this just blended on its own. Look at that, nice and hardy, any de harsh demarcation line there. Where this one, where I dabbed it on, it kind of just stayed there. It didn't really bloom. They call that blooming when the color just grabs the water and, and spreads. And it didn't really spread that much. So, I mean, if I wanted to, I could have manipulated it, spent more time and manipulated it, and I could have gotten it to be smooth like this. But this did it by itself. So that kind of shows you a difference there. This little sample here, I did a wet, just with plain wet water. I put wet water in the shape of a square. Same thing here, wet water in the shape of a square. No paint yet. And then I just picked up some pink on my brush and just put a dot in the middle to see how it would bloom out to the water. This one, this is the better tube watercolors and it bloomed out. Look how nicely it bloomed out. This one was the cake watercolors. And it started to bloom, but then it kind of, you can see where it just stopped right there. And in order for it to do this, I would have had to gone in and actually pushed it and made it do that. So that's kind of just an example. That's, you know, simple example to show you quickly the difference between a more expensive, higher quality watercolor paint and the little $5 kits. But again, to begin with, trust me, you're gonna be able to do all kinds of great stuff with the $5 kit. Um, it's gonna be fine. I just wanted to show you that there is a difference when you start getting better. You might wanna to graduate to a few of the tube watercolors. Okay, um, something else I wanna show you. Let me show you, I'm gonna paint right here just a circle just with water. Okay. And now I'm going to pick up, oh, let's pick up some blue so you can see it really well. And I'm just going to tap in. And with watercolor, it the watercolor will, in fact, let me just show you. It's not going to go past where I put that water. When it hits the dry paper, it's going to stop, which is nice because lots of times you can use that to your advantage when you're painting. Okay, 
So see that blue, it's not going, it's not going past the wet part into the dry. This is all dry paper here and it's just going to stay right there. But you can, what I want to show you is that you can use your brush as kind of like an eraser or a sponge. So let's say that's too much blue. You don't want it that dark. So pat the water out of your brush and see that? Just keep going as much as you want to take out. And you can remove color. This is pretty cool. There you go. So that's a good point to know. I've used that lots of times because often, especially when I started out, um, I would add way too much color and there wasn't enough <clears throat> definition. So I didn't know that I could do this. So I was blotting with a paper towel to get all the color out and it, I wasn't getting the effect that I wanted. So once I found out I could do that, that like a whole new world opened up. So then I can come back with a little tip of blue. And if I just do it along the edge, you can start to shade one side. And see how it's spreading? That's called the bloom. It's blooming. And it'll just continue. And you can kind of control that too. You can move it around with your brush if you want to. Just like that. Now that's what I was saying about this, how if I wanted to, I could have spent more time with the cake watercolor and controlled that bloom a little bit more. Okay, so let me show you something else. When you're working with watercolors, let's say if we're painting a flower, let me pick up some, some pink and I've got a little petal there. And let's say I want to add some dark um, just over in this corner. Well, because this is wet, that's going to bleed. It's not going to stay in that corner. That is going to end up bleeding through the whole thing. So oftentimes if you want to add a little darker color or a glaze, you need to wait for that first layer to dry before you come back and put your second layer. Um, yeah, now this one's dry over here. So for instance, just get a little dampness on there. I'll pick up some orange and I can come in and see I can control it. Now I can have that orange just right where I want it, right there. If this was all wet, that orange would be bleeding into everything. Now see up here, it's already, that whole top is turning dark, and that's not what I wanted. I just wanted the dark on the edge. So oftentimes you'll see artists, they'll have a blow dryer, and they'll dry their layers in between, and then go ahead and put their um, detail on top of the dried paint. So that's what you have to do for that. You have to be patient. And I didn't know that in the beginning. And I would get so frustrated because I would add a little dark in the center of a flower and it would bleed out. And I'd, it would go away. And I'd add a little bit more dark and it would bleed out and disappear. And I just kept doing that, wondering, what the heck am I doing wrong? And then I finally figured it out after I watched a few other artists uh, painting on YouTube. So don't make that mistake. So when you're picking up your paint, oh, let me show you that. So let me just move... Let me move this over a little bit. Okay. So what you can't see in the other videos I had, and I apologize, it was hard to get everything in all together, is me picking up the paint. So let me do this like this. There we go. So I add water. And something else you can do too, you can have a spritzer bottle and just spritz water into the little areas where your paint is. So I'm picking up, and then I'll go over to my palette, my glass palette, or my disposable palette, or my dinner plate, and just work it in my brush. 
If I want to add and mix colors, I'll pick up some orange and I'll just bring it up and I'll mix it here. And you just, I mean, you, you'll just know from experience um, how long to mix or how it looks. If it's looking way too dark, just add some more water. So pick up the paint, bring it over to your palette, work it in your bristles. Because if you just pick up the paint just like that, the paint tends to be just sitting on the outside. It's not worked into your bristles. By coming over on a palette and really working it in, you get that paint all into the bristles. Let me move this. And then that way, when you're ready to paint, you can. And then every time I rinse out my brush, I always just dab lightly in between. Okay, so let's see, what else? We've talked about our palettes, how I'm mixing the paint. Um, oh, I know, let's do one more thing. If you just use plain water, and let's say a flower petal, just do the same stroke as if you had paint on here. Push down, let the bristles spread, and come up to a point. So this is just water here. You probably can't see it too well on the video. But now I'm gonna pick up some color, and I'm just gonna drop it into that water. And it won't go any further, just like with the circle, it won't go any further than where the water is. And that's a technique that you can use lots of times when you're painting. That's kind of fun. And you can bring in another color and let it bleed into it to create some variation. And you can kind of use the tip of your brush to manipulate the color, kind of drag it where you want it to go. And remember, if you want to add detail, let's say if this was a leaf and I wanted to add veining and some detail, you have to let this, let's see, this is, oh, this is almost dry. Maybe that'll work. You have to let the paint dry. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I'm going to use another color just so you can see this better. And see, I'm just mixing my blue over here. And see, now the veining will stay there. It's not going to bleed because this is all dry. But yet if I try to do a vein on this, look, see, it doesn't, it bleeds. So that's not going to work. So be patient. <laughs> And I think that is a good place to stop. So I've kind of given you the basics on your paints, on the palettes you can use, on what you can do with and without water, on the pros and cons of less expensive paint to more expensive paint, the same with brushes, um, watercolor paper. And um, if you could think of something else, another question, uh, anything basic for beginners you think someone might be interested in learning, just kind of leave a comment below and I will try to get that answered for you. So thanks so much for joining me.